The iPhone 15 Ultra. Mark Gurman is saying that we might have a new Ultra model of the iPhone in 2023. But before that, I want to give a shout out to Moft and their awesome iPhone accessories. Okay, now if you're looking for some unique and stylish iPhone 14 accessories, then check out Moft, our sponsor for this video, and their Snap Stand Power Set. Tune in later in this video to find out more about it. And now, back to the video. So let's start with the why. This is not said to be a fifth iPhone model, but instead simply a replacement for the Pro Max. And it kind of makes sense. Samsung already has an Ultra phone. Xiaomi already has an Ultra phone. Uh, also, Apple already has a couple of Ultra products with the M1 Ultra chip and the new Apple Watch Ultra. And what the Ultra naming means, not just for Apple, but for everyone else, is essentially the highest end model. Currently, the Pro Max is simply just a larger version of the Pro model and I also think that that name is quite confusing uh, when you consider the M1 Max chip which is called M1 Max instead of M1 Pro Max. So by Apple removing the Pro Max from the iPhone naming scheme they would simply use the Max name in their processors which I think would make much more sense. Now in terms of the second question uh, what features will it actually have um, there's a couple and that's because an Ultra name already implies a couple of Ultra features. So if Apple calls this phone the iPhone Ultra, it obviously needs to have something more uh, than it just being a larger Pro model. So the first feature that this new iPhone Ultra is said to come with is Periscope Zoom. Finally, Apple. <laughs> This feature has been rumored to come in 2023, uh, quite some time ago, so it already aligns with this Ultra name. We also have a couple of patents that show that Apple is indeed working on their own version of Periscope Zoom. Not only that, but according to ming chi Kuo, only the largest iPhone 15 Pro model would get Periscope Zoom in 2023. So essentially only the Ultra model, which makes sense, you know, Ultra model requires Ultra features. And Periscope Zoom is considered to be an Ultra feature by uh, the Android market as well. A lot of these phones that do have Periscope Zoom only have it on uh, the highest end Ultra models. So Periscope Zoom, about time Apple, but you're probably wondering what sort of zoom level would we actually get? Well, Samsung has 10x optical zoom, which is actually considered to be the best one on the market. And Apple, uh, they wouldn't want to be inferior to Samsung. So I think that we don't actually have any leaks on this, by the way, this is just my speculation, but I do think uh, that we might see a 10x optical zoom module with a higher resolution sensor than what Samsung uses at the moment. Maybe a similar approach to how Google does it, where they use a large 48 megapixel sensor with 5x optical zoom, and the results of that are very close to Samsung's 10 megapixel sensor with 10x optical zoom. So if Apple uses a 48 megapixel 10x optical zoom sensor, then uh, they could have the best optical zoom on the market. Not only that, but we've seen how uh, that 2x sensor crop on the iPhone 14 Pro was very, very good. Uh, and also the 5x and the 10x, they've both seen improvements from the iPhone 13 Pros, despite having the exact same telephoto module. So a lot of these improvements were because uh, of the smarter image processing. Okay, so let's say that I do add a 10x optical zoom lens. The question now is, will they also keep that 10x zoom module and have 3x optical as well as 10x optical, so two separate modules, uh, like Samsung does it? So 3x for portraits and then 10x for that incredible zoom range. Well, that could be a possibility. In that case, of course, we would have a four camera module design. However, if Apple decides to stick with the current uh, three camera module design, in that case, the 3x would be fully replaced by the 10x. Um, and then if you want to zoom in for portrait mode, you would have to use that 2x sensor crop. Let me know in the comments, which approach would you guys prefer? Now, the second Ultra feature is likely to be a titanium body. So the Apple Watch Ultra has already done this. Titanium is lighter than stainless steel and is also very durable and it still looks very premium. So overall, titanium is superior to stainless steel. Not only that, but Apple even has multiple patents on titanium alloys. More specifically, uh, how to give them colors, multiple colors, which I think would work perfectly on this Ultra model. As you probably know, the Apple Watch Ultra only comes in one color, which is the standard titanium finish. But with this iPhone Ultra, we will likely see multiple variants. So a darker color, uh, that silver, maybe even uh, a blue or something like that. So that should be perfectly doable with this patent that Apple has. And Apple also has patents on coatings that uh, they can apply over titanium 
to reduce the fingerprints. Fingerprints which were a major issue on the Pro models of the iPhone with that stainless steel body. Also, the Ultra would be very heavy. Keep in mind that the iPhone 14 Pro Max is already almost as heavy as the Galaxy Z Fold 4 and the 15 Ultra would be even heavier uh, because of that periscope zoom lens. Titanium would likely solve this weight issue. Um, and the thing is, when you compare the iPhone 14 Plus to the iPhone 14 Pro Max, there is a massive weight difference and the 14 Plus just feels uh, much lighter and much easier to use. And the only major difference that adds to that weight is uh, the stainless steel frame really. So yeah, stainless steel is very heavy. So in that case, the iPhone 15 lineup would have three different finishes, aluminum, stainless steel for the Pro model, and then titanium for this Ultra model. And this collection actually matches the finishes that Apple has on the Apple Watch. Okay, now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of Moft's new products is the Snap Stand Power Set. It is the first modular phone stand with a premium vegan leather battery accessory, which can be stacked using MagSafe to offer you a lot of versatility and customizability. So the battery has a side port that allows you to browse vertically while charging both it and your phone simultaneously, unlike uh, the competition. And coupled with the magnetic Type-C adapter, it offers a seamless experience. On top of that, you can also tailor your stand and battery to different use cases. So if you're watching something on your phone, you can use the stand to prop it up uh, and the battery to charge your earbuds. And if you don't need the battery at all, you can just take the stand and leave the battery charging at home. Check them out by using the link below. Now, the third feature that the Ultra might feature is a larger battery. Now, this one has not been leaked yet, but it is very likely. And that's because if you take a look at the Apple Watch Ultra, that one has literally double the battery size compared to the Apple Watch Series 8 for double the battery life. Now, we already know that a 15 Ultra would automatically be thicker than the 14 Pro Max because of that periscope uh, module. In fact, if you take a look at the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which also has a 10x optical zoom module, that one is 8.9 millimeters thick, so considerably thicker than the 7.9 millimeters of the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So Apple could easily have a thickness on the iPhone 15 Ultra of 8.9 millimeters or even nine and above. And I don't think that would look odd when compared to the competition. And I would be perfectly happy with having a thicker iPhone if that results in a noticeably better battery life. As the battery life right now with the iPhone 14 Pros, uh, let's just say that it hasn't been that great. The fourth new feature that we could see is a new design. So the front would remain the same as we have it now with the dynamic island. However, we could see a redesigned back and a redesigned frame as this has actually been unchanged since the iPhone 12. So the 12, the 13 and the 14, they all had the same back design and the same front design. John Prosser did mention that the iPhone 14 would have that iPhone style design. Of course, we didn't really see that. So maybe we could see that with the iPhone 15s. I don't know if you remember how the Apple Watch was supposed to get a flat design with a Series 7, but that didn't happen. However, it actually happened a year later with the Apple Watch Ultra. Also, if Apple does keep that 3X optical zoom lens and also adds uh, the new 10X, we would have that four camera module, which would likely require either a much larger camera island or maybe even a complete redesign of that camera arrangement. By the way, we are working on an iPhone 15 Ultra concept. It's not quite ready for this video, but it will be for a future one. So definitely to subscribe in case you wanna see that as soon as it comes out. And number five, we have something that we were actually thinking about and that is an extra button. This is essentially our idea based on what Apple did with the Apple Watch Ultra. And you know, they added that extra button because the Apple Watch Ultra was made for athletes. So it made sense. But then the iPhone 15 Ultra would be aimed at photographers. So I think it also makes sense to have a dedicated photography button. Sony already does this on their phones, a button that allows you to half press it to focus and then fully press it to take the shot. Hopefully something with a different texture as well so that uh, you can distinguish it from the other buttons. As right now, there is no quick way of launching the camera. Like all Android phones have this, you can just double tap the power button and it will instantly launch the camera app. On the iPhone, you cannot do that. When you double tap uh, the power button, it goes into your wallet. And honestly, this happened to me so many times. I saw something interesting on the street, like a super nice car passing by. I want to take a photo, but by the time I opened the camera app on my iPhone, I already missed the shot. That never happened on an Android phone. So Apple needs to address this uh, for photographers or even just casual users. I do think that it's such a nice thing to have. Now, of course, that aside from these changes, there's even more coming to the entire iPhone 15 lineup. For example, USB Type-C, that's the biggest one I would say. 
finally we're switching away from lightning and then on top of that the apple a17 chip on uh, the pro and the ultra however aside from these we're not actually expecting to see any other main changes uh, maybe this will change once we get some more leaks but up until this point the camera is not expected to change aside from that periscope zoom lens on the ultra model the new sensor is expected to stay the same like we already got a massive upgrade with the 14 pros and Apple needs some time to properly optimize that. I'm also not expecting to see any ultra-wide improvements as we just got a new sensor with the 14 Pros. Uh, and again, in terms of the telephoto, they could upgrade the 3X to a 5X, but then the 5X would already be a periscope. Uh, so yeah, in that case, that would simply be on the ultra models. So yeah, to be honest, most of the things would remain the same aside from the introduction of the ultra model, USB Type-C, and of course, the new chip. But let me know what do you guys think and do subscribe for more Leaks Numbers episodes. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoftech and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.